this is a test. What up? Welcome back to Taco Potato Mustang. I'm Matt. I'm super excited because I'm finally going to do some upgrades to the suspension on the Fox Body Mustang. Let me show you what we're working with. So here I got the Coney Orange uh, struts and in this, these boxes, I have the, the Coney Orange rear shocks. Here are some Gabriel. These are uh, like OEM replacement. They were fairly cheap. So I went ahead and did that just so I'm at least upgrading the quad shocks. And these are some sway bar end links that I picked up a while back. Um, so uh, I got a pretty good deal on the uh, Coney Orange suspension and I do have experience with this uh, on my other car on the dude staying. Um, I have the Coney orange shocks and struts along with some uh, some lowering springs on that car. On, on the Fox body for now I'm not going to go with lowering springs. I just wanted to because uh, the the off-road x-pipe on the exhaust it it, uh, it hangs pretty low as is. I might do the I'm going to see how the shocks and struts improve the handling on the Fox. And then um, at some point I might do lowering springs with some caster camber plates and um, some bump stops, I think they're called. Uh, and then I probably have to get the car aligned. So um, also, since I'm gonna have the car up on jack stands, uh, one thing I'm gonna try and do is I wanna start getting rid of some of the carbon buildup and oil and all that on the bottom of the car. It's, it's pretty dirty and um, uh, it'll help when I am, uh, uh, it'll help with trying to ident better identify some of the uh, sources of the oil leaks that I've been dealing with on this car. I'm, I know for sure that the low oil sensor, um, is that area around there is leaking uh, and I have a, a plug with a, a little gasket that I'm going to try to use to replace that eventually and then also the two oil drain plugs on the on the oil pan I want to replace those and add new gaskets and hopefully that will make a significant uh, difference in terms of the amount of oil that is leaking all over my um, card cardboard uh, uh, I have cardboard boxes underneath the car for now, uh, but I have been leaking oil in the driveway and in the in the garage. So I want to make sure that I'm doing less of that, and um, and also just kind of seeing what else is going on underneath the car, um, and you know get it cleaned up, uh, make it easier to you know do stuff underneath the car in the future without getting covered in. Uh, in dirt and grime and oil. So anyways, let's get started on the suspension. Okay, got the wheel off. Now I need to remove these 17 millimeter bolts and get the brake caliper out of the way. Now I need to tie the brake caliper off somewhere so that it's not hanging. Got a zip tie. Always good to have in the garage. Okay, I used a extra jack stand and a piece of wood and I have the caliper over here so it's not hanging too much by the brake line and also tied it with a uh, zip tie and now I got to get the what I assume is the factory strut out here we go 
to loosen the strut to spindle hardware, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket and a 24 millimeter wrench. Not so pro tip, don't forget the WD-40. Now we wait. Maybe we will try the torque wrench. Maybe not. Ugh. Okay. It's gonna take a little more work than I expected. But I don't know why I didn't expect it. This is this is the position that I had to be in to get this loose. I basically was like hanging on this with all my weight. Ugh. I weigh like 250 pounds, so let that be a lesson to you. People who do not weigh 250 pounds, you better be strong or you better have some freaking power tools or you can just pay somebody to do it. Ugh. And I got one more to go on this side, on this wheel. Oh my goodness. Three hours later or so, and I finally got the other piece loose. Oh my God. Great start. I took my extra jack uh, and I put it underneath the control arm and now I am slowly removing the front sway bar end link. Finally got the sway bar end link out. This is the one that I just pulled out. You can see that one of the bushings is broken and that's what the new one looks like compared to the, what I assume is the OEM factory version the thing i'm supposed to do is remove this top nut from the strut and according to the instructions on lmr it requires a 24 millimeter socket which i got this morning because i did not have one and clearly this is not the correct socket So there is the driver's side front strut, which I finally got out about 20 seconds after I came home with a set of um, impact sockets for my impact wrench. So uh, once again, I am late to the show of things that make life easier while you're working on cars. Um, now I just got to piece together the new strut and get that put on and then I will move on to the next one, which will hopefully be easier. Okay, here is the mess that I'm currently dealing with. So I have this new hardware for the struts. This is the old piece that goes on the top. This is the new piece, but also I'm dealing with these things. So this is the top of the dust boot. It's like a retainer for the dust boot that goes over the strut. But this, and this is the new part. It, it seems the instructions from Prothane Motion Control or whatever they are called, it seems like they're telling me I need to remove the rubber from this piece, which will then look more like this. And then I would put this part on top. That's how I'm understanding it, but we'll see. I am not completely convinced I have this correct, but I 
we'll proceed. Maybe I'll do some more searching. I started with the wire wheel trying to get this off and now I am using fire and it appears to be working, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Kinda makes me want marshmallows. Fire. Okay, after burning and cutting and using a screwdriver and extensive use of the wire wheel on the drill, here is what we're looking at. That took an extremely long time. I feel like if I were ever to do this again, it would make a lot more sense to look for just a replacement piece, like this piece without the rubber on it, it's crazy. So, anyways, allegedly, this is supposed to go on here. Seems like it, I don't know if, if it quote unquote fits, but um, yeah, we'll get this put together and then hopefully get this first strut in. Okay, I think this is assembled correctly. Uh, this is the strut mount and the cover for it. And I just need to put the strut in up through the top and start reassembling. Look, there's a strut in the car, mostly. <sighs> progress, slow but progress. So it's the next day. Last night I tried to get everything wrapped up on the driver side strut, but I couldn't get the, um, the new sway bar end link in, so I'm going to try to do that while I have the other wheel off and have the other end of it disconnected because maybe I can move the sway bar a little bit. Um, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to, somebody on the forum suggested uh, doing it while the wheels are on the ground because um, it said it's easier to do that when the wheels um, are not, um, hanging or whatever. So I'm going to attempt that if the my first idea doesn't work. But I am uh, moving on to wheel number two, the front passenger side. Hopefully I can get this other Coney strut done a little bit quicker than the first one. And then um, uh, at some point, when I have, when I know I have time, try to get the rear shocks done as well as, and also the quad shocks. So um, let's see how this goes. Second, I got the passenger side strut out and I need to do this thing again. And uh, Uh, make it make it uh, all metal. Oof. This is the probably the, one of the most time consuming parts. So this is before making some progress, but uh, this thing takes forever. Got this one done. Took forever. Look at all that stuff. All that stuff. Now it's time to get the strut um, put together and put on the car. 
got the passenger side, passenger side strut mostly in. Now I just gotta get things tightened up and then try to put in the sway bar end links on both sides. And then the front will be done. Look, the car is mostly put back together. So I, um, the only thing I did not finish was the sway bar end link on the driver's side. I did make one half-assed effort to do it while I was on the, while I was on the floor with the um, wheels on the car. Uh, it was pretty hard to reach. So I think what I'm gonna do is when I have some time, I'll put the car up on ramps and uh, probably loosen the passenger side and then try to get both passenger and side on, passenger and driver side on there uh, at least, at least loosely, and then, uh, try to tighten them up. So we'll see. Um, I did not have time to do the, um, rear shocks yet. So I probably won't be driving the car until I get time to do that. Um, might try and do it one of the evenings this week. We'll see. Um, yeah. So my first time doing struts on the Fox body, pretty exhausting experience but i didn't die so um if i can do it and you have even a marginal amount of mechanical skill you could probably do it um but yeah i'm looking forward to um getting the shocks on so i can take the car for a drive um i'll try to make some time this week probably going to be pretty busy um but we'll see anyways Thanks for watching my video. If you like my video and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe. Um, yeah, uh, keep an eye out for more Fox Body Project videos. Um, hopefully we'll get the suspension squared away soon and then move on to other things. Um, oh, uh, one more thing. I did mention the cleaning up of the bottom of the car. I am probably gonna do at least start that when the car is up on ramps. I, I feel, um, I don't know, just a little bit safer on the ramps uh, versus with the car up on jack stands, um, but we'll see. Uh, not gonna get to that this time around, um, but I'm definitely gonna try and make some time for it and start working on those leaks. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you're staying healthy, hope you're staying safe. Peace out.